How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Dime Out channel. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I was a professional jeweler in the UK for over 20 years, but then I moved to Japan. So now I'm living here and putting my skills to good use by making jewelry making instructional videos. So if you're into that kind of thing and you think some of my videos may be useful to you, why not click like and subscribe to the channel and then uh, helps the channel grow and supports me do more. So talking of support, I'm going to start my videos from now on saying thank you to the patrons because I usually do it at the end and I worry that people just click off or skip the video before I finish talking. So uh, these are the people that are really putting money down to really help me continue this channel. So we've got a new patron the other day, Telecon. Thank you Telecon for your contribution, it really helps me and uh, helps me help you the way I see it. I will, I will work hard and I feel encouraged every time we get a new patron and uh, yeah, thank you to all the patrons as always, really appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to do more quality content into the future. Right, today, my last video, yeah, um, it was about me moving into this new space for setting up my workshop. And I said it would interrupt the channel, I won't be able to upload a video. But then today, like this morning, I was about to start, well, I've set my bench up and I was about to start putting stuff all over it again. And uh, I thought, no, why not just do a video now about setting up a bench? So <laughs> there's a new, new video just on me doing what I said would stop me doing videos. So... I went to a second-hand furniture shop and I bought this. I chose it because it was big, obviously had a lot of width to it, but it was very deep as well. And that depth away from you is very useful when you've got tools all around you. Like if you look at my previous videos, I had like, a, like shelves in front of me, loads of stuff stacked on them. Just useful, you can just, the more things you can have like around you really conveniently is uh, quite useful. So if you're getting up and going through drawers and stuff, um, having sets of drawers under the bench as well might be, might be handy. Uh, but yeah, choose something Ideally, quite big, as long as you've got the space for it. And then the thickness as well. This is about three centimetres. And that's kind of the minimum I would go for. I would actually prefer like four. I think that'd be really strong, sturdy top on it. Um, if you can't find anything that thick, just get two. Like you might have to fabricate one from scratch. Just get two big sheets of something like two centimetres. And then just, you can literally just glue them together. And then cut out what you need with a jigsaw. Talking of jigsaws, I bought this. This was like the cheapest crappiest jigsaw i found in the shop um i would recommend buying it from a proper hardware shop in case if you order it online it doesn't work it's just a hassle of getting it sent back and stuff uh, it's also nice they have them on display quite often in shops you can like hold it make sure you like it but yeah this was literally uh i can't remember exactly the price but it was about 30 pounds call it like 40 dollars um yeah works fine i've had it like over a year and a half now use it all the time I'm always cutting wood up so you need something like that and then you can cut this shape out. My measurements were, oh, where's my tape measure? So cutting this shape out, um, if you're worried about you don't know the dimensions, I'll tell you what I did. Like this was 23 inches. That's just what I felt looked right. Obviously I've got experience from working at one of these places all the time. It was 23 and I think it was 11 deep. Yeah, it looks about right. Yeah, basically I marked out 23 wide, 11 inches back. And then I just freestyled this like, if you're worried about it has to be a certain curvature, you need to snap out of that thinking. That's not a creative mind. You're free to do what you want. And then if you don't like it, work on it a bit, get your jigsaw out and adjust it. Like if you want to be a creative person, like coming up with original jewelry, uh, you need to snap out of this mind of constantly researching what should be what way or the other. You just do what you want. Uh, it's the beauty of being a creative person. So um, yeah, so 23 by 11, that's what I work with, but everybody's body size is different you might want a bit wider a bit narrower a bit deeper like up to you but yeah literally just mark three points and then freestyle this curve and say you don't know where to get a jeweler's lamp from like i didn't either here this is looks like a jeweler's lamp and uh it was like over a thousand lumens i thought okay that'll do so i just bought that this is not actually for jewelry and i had I used to get comments people asking me like like the lamp and asking where i got it from just from an electronics store like they sold like tvs and air conditioning units <laughs> and they got the little corner of the shop sold, sold lamps i chose this one so yeah not an expensive one works fine I can adjust it um led is good because you get a nice white light it's really good for your eyes daylight and uh obviously the width of it as well lights up a lot of area so get a lamp that looks like that don't worry too much about it being a specific jeweler's lamp it's not really any such thing it's just they make a lamp like this and they sell it to jewelers but as for a, a lamp specifically for jewelers there's nothing special about the light really just it's led daylight light just a nice white light hang on i got distracted by my lamp i shouldn't need to talk about my bench some more uh, the height of the bench is quite important i like my benches quite high so that's literally from the floor to the top of my desk is about three foot look 
So I do that because, let me get my chair. When you're working as a professional jeweler, you're here, like you're sat here many hours, most days. So uh, posture is important. You want to look after your body a little bit. So you don't want to be, if your bench is too low, you're going to be hunched over like that with your elbows up, holding pliers and sawing. You're constantly looking over the top of things. I think that's really bad for your back, like hunching it like that. So, I mean, I, last place I, the last place I worked, I took the wheels off my chair, the chair similar to this, took the wheels off it to get it even lower. And then that kind of forces you to have a straight back. So you kind of looking more straight across at stuff. And also it's easier when you've got to look closely, like I've got something set up and soldering. It's just easier when your face is like right <laughs> in front of it to look around things. So if you're a bit higher, you've got to look down on it and then it's difficult to get down and look across at things set up in front of you. So either have a chair that goes really low, but even there's a limit to that because then your legs get bent quite a lot. So that be can become uncomfortable. Uh, it's preferable to have a high bench. And uh, as long as you've got a high adjustable chair, it doesn't cause a problem. This three foot and a normal office chair works out quite well for me. So my bench is quite high. Uh, it's un unlikely you will find a desk suitable for making jewelry that high. So I had to raise mine up and I did it like this. I just bought this big chunk of wood. This was nine centimeters, almost nine and a half centimeters thick and uh, yeah it was one long length I chopped up into four and it worked out quite well with the distances I need so that I just felt was the easiest way for me to do it rather than trying to build up each leg individually just get something that goes right across it and then that's really secure as well and obviously you get some brackets I went to the shop yesterday and bought these wider than the ones I had on there so it really helps it be more secure I'm thinking like this this is a like a workbench I've made specifically for making jewelry I didn't actually use it in my last place so anyway that'll get some use now uh, by the way if you haven't done woodwork before if you can make jewelry you'll definitely be able to do woodwork woodwork is a joke it's so easy like compared to like tiny little fiddly bits of metal soldering them together and stuff like sorry if that offends any carpenters like, I'm, I know I'm not doing it on any sort of professional level but just cutting out big shapes of wood and bolting them together is it's so easy like if you can use a tape measure and a saw like you've basically nailed it already literally um so yeah my vice uh i may put it back i may put it back here because i can bolt the bench to the wall over there with a l-shaped bracket and then i can pull things this way i've got space to stand here and obviously i just want to say you are using the mills and then vices, pulling stuff down, you are tugging on the bench away from the wall, so you need to bolt it to the wall one way or another. I'm not actually sure. Japanese walls are very thin. I need to learn about the raw plugs and stuff to use. So uh, if I can't get it into the wall securely, I'll go to the edge of my windowsill over there, it'll help. And obviously just secure to the wall. If you've got very sturdy legs on a table and then it bolted to the wall as well, especially on two corners, um, it's going to be really solid, really stable, but this is this is pretty good as it is. Uh, right, so I want to talk about the peg. We've all got different bench pegs all around the world. England, they're like this. You put them in this way, slightly tapering down. Uh, they do work very well upside down as well. I did that once for one life of a peg. It was actually quite useful having it flat on top, uh, just for putting things down on it, bits of chain and stuff that you're working on. But anyway, usually they're like this, tapering down, and I just chiseled out a hole it's just that shape, but a bit thinner. Just chiseled out a hole and just hammered it in there. And there's a screw up underneath. So that's really secure. It's worth getting that in really tight so it doesn't wobble about when you're working on it. I've got pockets, like just a simple bit of leather. I just literally just screwed them in. Uh, yeah, so these are like just long pockets for files and buff sticks. This stuff was just from eBay. Cheap, fireproof, like fake leather is all it was like it cost like 10 pounds like hardly anything a really big sheet of it as well you can choose loads of colors i chose blue i just want to say if you've got a flathead screw i don't have one here but say like this bolt it's got the just the line across it so a screw like that but with just the flathead that can be useful if you're doing a lot of work with jump rings like i just knocked up this jump ring to show you uh you can open and close them one-handed like so say that's in my bench like that like I just hold it one hand and just tweak it's open now and then same Close. Closed. <laughs> so yeah, it can help. It can be a bit handy. Like, I don't do much jump ring work anymore, so I haven't got one. But if I did, I'd have a little flathead screw in the side, just because sometimes you need to hold on to something. You can't let go of something, or you don't want to let go of it, and then you can just have that in one hand and just open it quickly. Uh, helped me in my place I did my apprenticeship. A uh, lot of repairs, so always working with jump rings, putting on the ends of chains and stuff. So speeded me up a little bit.
having having that there. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I just wanted to emphasize, while I had all this clear, I wanted to emphasize exactly my setup because if you're a beginner or you're just interested, you might want to know exactly what it is I work with. Um, this is from my experience, this works well for me, this kind of height, this kind of depth and stuff and this kind of chair, this kind of measurement, but we're all, we're all different shapes and sizes and we're all doing different kind of things at the bench. So do what works for you. Um, if you can get a jigsaw and just learn to do woodwork, you really help yourself out in the workshop, I think. And you will find it easy. If you can make jewelry, you can definitely do woodwork. It's like no, no worries at all. Um, cool, yeah, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you again next video. I'm gonna work hard now and try and get this all organized so I can get back to business as usual. And uh, yeah, look forward to see you on the next video. Bye-bye.